These right here are all the integrals that you have to remember for your calculus 2 class. And what I mean by that is, if you encounter one of these integrals right here, such as this one, you need to be able to put down the answer right away. You don't have to do any furthermore because you need to know the standard results. So this is what we are going to do. Go ahead and download this file right here. It's a blank one of this integral table. Try it first, make sure you can write down all the answers and then watch the video. And then we are going to go over the answers in the next, no, just kidding. This video right now, here we go. The integral of x to the nth power. This is the reverse power rule. We add one to the power and divide it by the new power. The answer for this is one over n plus one, x to the n plus one, done. And then you can put on plus c. Here though, we have a small condition because we have n plus one on the bottom. So make sure that we say n cannot be equal to negative one because otherwise we're dividing by zero. Now, if n is equal to negative one, then we are looking at one over x. What's the answer for that? The answer is ln, yes, ln x. And then you attach an absolute value of it, and then plus c. E. Okay, how about e to the x? It's just e to the x. Done. How about b to the x? Ah, that's different, huh? Okay, if we are taking the derivative, then we just have b to the x times ln b. But here we are doing the anti-derivative. We will have b to the x, but divided by ln b. And b is just a constant, ln b. Of course, we have to say b is not 1, b is not negative, etc. Mm, yeah, b can be 1 half and so on. I will just keep it like this. Now, what about the integral of sine x? The answer is not positive cosine, but rather negative cosine x. Because if you differentiate cosine x, you get negative sine. You need another negative to get a positive. How about if you have the integral of cosine x? The answer is positive sine x. Yeah, very common mistakes right here. Be careful with the positive and negative signs. Next, the integral of secant square x. The root of the Hopf function gives us secant square. Well, it's just tangent x, yes. So for all this, you don't really have any work to show. It's just knowing the derivative of function gives you this. And how about what derivative of function will give you this? It's the co-version of that. But remember, negative. Negative cotangent x plus c. Now, the integral of secant x times tangent x. Hmm, derivative of what function? Secant x, yes. So secant x plus c. Cosecant, cotangent, you also have the co version of this, which is cosecant x, but remember that will be a negative. And then how about the integral of tangent x? For this one, at first you will have to do some use up, right? Sine x over cosine x, etc. But here's the standard answer that you can just put down. And that's the question it's asking you specifically to show the integral of tangent x is equal to the answer here by doing use up also. The standard, the standard answer is ln absolute value of secant x plus c. E. Sometimes you may see people write negative ln cosine x. They are the same thing. You can put a negative up here to make that into a negative one exponent. Cosine x raised to a negative one power is one over cosine, which is secant x. Now for cotangent x, the standard answer is ln absolute value of sine x. Now this is a little bit trickier. The integral of secant x, I will tell you the standard result of this is ln absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. And this is what I like to say. When we are doing integrals, sine and cosines are best friends because you can see that right here. And tangent and co tangent and secant, they are best friends. When you have secant x, you get ln secant x plus tangent x. The integral of tangent x is just ln of secant x. So they do look similar. Now for the next one, the integral of cosecant x, this right here, the standard answer, what I will say, a standard answer is negative ln absolute value of cosecant x plus cotangent x. Now, sometimes you may see people write positive ln absolute value cosecant x minus cotangent x. Same thing, 
they are equivalent. You can try to do some trick identity work to show that. But yeah. And before we continue, I just want to mention that I don't know if your Calculus 2 class is going to cover the integral of cotangent cosecant x, cosecant x, and also cosecant square x, or this one right here, the coefficients right here. But you still have to know integral of cosine, that's for sure. It's just, like for example, when I teach Cal 2, I tell my students, you don't have to remember this, 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 and this, because there are so many things to remember already, plus, this is really similar to the original version, like the second version, right? Just think something like that. Anyways, depending on what your teacher is going over, uh, ask your teacher to see if you have to remember them or not. Right, last two. 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. This right here is inverse sine of x. Definitely remember that. Lastly, integral 1 over 1 plus x squared. This right here, inverse tangent. Again, the derivative of this gives you that, the derivative of this gives you that. So if you got all of them right, great job. If not, then it's okay. Put it aside for a little bit and then review this again. And then try to remember them and then try to do the blank one again until you can you know, remember them all. all right. Hope this helps. That's it.